Hello and welcome back to my channel. Recently my parents moved house and their new garden is absolutely teeming with wildlife, especially birds, who have been loving these bird feeders. Honestly, I've never seen anything like it. We're having to refill them daily. I want to get to know our new feathery neighbours a little bit better, so I'm going to set up a wildlife camera. It will take close-up photos of the birds on the feeders without me having to bother them. The thing is, I didn't have a wildlife camera, so I've made one using an old food container, a recycled bottle, and one of these. This is a Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry Pi is a small, simple computer that you can program at home to do a bunch of really cool computer stuff. But I'm programming and turning it into a wildlife camera. But how do I turn this into one of these? Well, if you want to make your own, you're going to need the following things. A Raspberry Pi Zero W. I got mine from a magazine starter kit and I'm going to use that bit of cardboard for later too. A standard camera module for Raspberry Pi Zero. I've got mine from a website called Pi Maroni. A USB power bank, the longer the battery life the better, with a micro USB cable. A 16 gigabyte or greater micro SD card, and you're going to need some kind of adapter so you can connect it to a computer or laptop. A waterproof container, like a food storage box. Yours could be smaller or larger than the one I'm using and a recycled plastic drinks bottle to use as a lens shield. Other bits you might find useful are a pair of scissors, some masking tape, blue tack, string or cord of some kind, and a drill. Of course, always ask a grown up if you're gonna use something like this. The exact instructions for the camera I'm making are down in the description box below. It's called the My Nature Watch Camera. Now you might have some of this stuff already, but if you don't, it shouldn't cost you more than 30-ish pounds in total. Let's get making, and we're gonna kick things off with our SD card and the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is going to be the brain of our wildlife camera and we need to give it some instructions or a set of rules to follow so it knows what to do. And for that we have to download some software from the internet. We then take that software, put it on this micro SD card and then we'll slide this into the Raspberry Pi. But to download it we have to go to the mynaturewatch.net website. Here you just follow the instructions and click on the software download link. It's known as a disk image file. It will start downloading onto your computer and it should take about an hour. But in the meantime, you can download an application called Etcher. And that's going to let us take the newly downloaded software and put it onto our micro SD card. When the software is downloaded, slide your micro SD card using an adapter into the computer or laptop. Then open up Etcher and you have to select a disk image. That's the software you've just downloaded. And then you've got to choose a drive. That's the micro SD card. Finally, press flush and the copying will start. 15 minutes later and the software will have copied onto the card. And now you can put this carefully into the Raspberry Pi and we can move on to building the camera. To finish up the electronics, we need to connect the most important part and that is our camera. You want to unclip the black locking strip away from the white camera connector and then you take the camera ribbon and then you slide it underneath the locking strip and into the camera connector. There you go. This is basically our camera, but it's a bit flimsy. So you want to grab a piece of cardboard and cut it to roughly the same size as the food container you're going to use. Use the container as a stencil, draw around it and then cut out your piece of card. Once you've done that, you want to cut away one corner. This is going to be the mount for our camera so we can hold it in place securely. Carefully stick the Raspberry Pi to the card with a loop of tape or some sticky pads and then delicately fold the camera ribbon around the top of the card and use its own sticky pad to stick it down on the opposite side. Now we just need to give it some power. Get your USB battery and you want to connect 
connect it into the power, the PWR port at the top of the Raspberry Pi. That's this one just here. And you should see a green light start flickering. That's a good thing. It means that the Raspberry Pi is booting up. And in not too long, we should see the red light of the camera flash on. Hey, there we go, perfect. We've got it, right, oh gosh, that zoomed in. Hang on, if we put this outside right now, it would work as a wildlife camera, but obviously it's not very weatherproof. So if you want to, you can do the next step and weatherproof it. Right, so you want to put your camera inside the container and then using a pen, pen, oh, need a pen, one second. You want to mark where the lenses on the box and just draw a little circle around it. Then you want to take the camera back out again and put that to the side. Take the drill and I've put in a drill bit that's roughly the same size as the camera lens and I'm going to drill a hole in the container. Once you've got the hole, you could stop there, but I'm going to go one step further and make a lens cover. Squish the bottle down and then you just want to cut off the top. At this point, you can either stick the bottle over the hole directly, or you can use the bottle lid, drill another hole in it, and then stick that to the container, and then you have yourself a detachable lens cover. Once you've attached the lens cover, put the electronics inside and carefully line up the camera lens with the hole, making sure nothing's in its way. Secure everything with a bit of tape, put the lid on, and here you go. We've got a wildlife camera. But you might be wondering, how, how do I turn it on? How do I make it work? How do we see those pictures? Well, we need to go back to the laptop. The software on the SD card has been designed so that it uses the Raspberry Pi's own Wi-Fi network. And this allows us to control and operate the camera through a web page on any phone or computer. All you need to do when the Raspberry Pi is turned on, you search in your Wi-Fi networks for My Nature Watch. Click on that, and then the password to get in is badgers and foxes. Once you're connected to the My Nature Watch Wi-Fi, you want to open up the dedicated web page, and that is camera.local. Open that up, and you will start to see a live feed. So I've got my camera here now. So if you want to start taking pictures, you just click on Start Image Capture, press that, the button goes red, and from now on, if anything jumps in front of that lens, it's gonna trigger the camera and it will take a photo. Um, and you can also go to the image gallery, but, no, oh, there's <laughs> just loads of photos of me at the moment. <laughs> but we don't want photos of me in an office. We wanna get this outside. Now for the fun part. We've got our camera, it's turned on, um, and down here, I've just got my laptop set up so I can check that I am positioning the camera in the right place. And I think I'm going to start by popping it in the tree here, pointing at this delightful bird feeder. Delicious. It's not raining, so I'm gonna take my lens cover off so it fits into this gap here in the tree. Now it's up there, all I need to do is start things off on my laptop, but the birds aren't going to come if we're outside. So I'm gonna take all of this gear back in. Alrighty. So the wildlife camera has been over by the peanuts uh, for quite some time now. So actually I'm going to move it over here to another tree and a different feeder. This is full of niger seeds and the hole to the feeder is a little bit smaller. So we should get different types of birds, but I think I'm gonna have to secure it in place with a bit of cord. There we go, that's better. All right. Last place I'm gonna put it is actually down here at the base of the tree because I've noticed quite a lot of the bird seed falls to the ground and there are different types of birds that prefer to feed down here. I'm putting the lens cap back on just because it looks like it might rain and we'll see who shows up. Oh, okay, it's the end of the day and it's getting a little bit too dark for the camera. So I'm bringing it in and uh, let's see what pictures we've got. All right, time to look through the gallery. I'm going to open it up now. 
Oh, brilliant. Immediately, I've got a great photo of a blue tit, and I can tell it's a blue tit because it's got a um, blue on its wings, its tails, and uh, the cap of its head, its crown. And I've got more than one. This photo, there's two. That's, that's amazing. Wow. Okay, so this one's slightly different. It's kind of got a greenish wing, yellow front, uh, with black cap and a white stripe, and I'm pretty sure that's a marsh tit. This one, I've only got a little sort of like corner picture of it, but that is a coal tit. It's got a, a black head and then it has sort of like a white stripe running down here. <gasps> Yay, my favourite! We've got long tail tits and I love these guys because they just look a little bit scrappy um, and they get their name because they have long tails. I also took some photos of, on the fat ball feeder that we've got there and maybe that's my favourite photo so far. That is hilarious. <laughs> All right, it looks like Mr. and Mrs. Duck came for a little waddle. Um, we've got a little photo series of them walking past, which is brilliant. So I'm sure they were cleaning up some of that bird seed that was on the ground. As I expected, different type of bird here. This is a goldfinch. Um, and this feeder is perfect for them because they have much pointier beaks. So it means that they can get into those small holes and get to those little seeds uh, more easily. And I've got two of them, look at that. They're beautiful. Just look at the pattern on their wings. Oh gosh, they're having a bit of a fisty cuffs over here on that one. They're absolutely gorgeous. They've got red heads and then a flash of yellow on their wings as well. Honestly, I really recommend doing this. If you love wildlife and you fancy having a go at doing some computer programming without having to learn any of the slightly more complicated computer language at first, then this is great. You just follow the instructions. It couldn't be easier to do. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. And if you want me to have a go at another rather raspberry pie project then just leave some suggestions down in the uh, in the comments below stay curious and i'll see you soon bye